Welcome to a new vault log. In the previous video I showed you how I built this monitoring system for CO2. It's based on an ESP32 development board and it uses two sensors, the MHZ19B and the CCS811. In that video I explained the differences between these two sensors, so please watch that video to better understand the current one and the conclusions presented here. I've let the system run and collect data for the past few days and now we can take a look at the data and draw some conclusions which might help you decide what sensors to use in your future project or it might determine you to build a similar data logger to check the CO2 levels in your home because I assure you if you do not have a ventilation system chances are you are sleeping in some high CO2 concentration levels. So let's start with a baseline. I have established the MHZ19B is reasonably well calibrated because when kept outside my window I was getting values in the range of 400 to 500 ppm which is uh, the background CO2 concentration. This might vary according to your location and present atmospheric conditions but generally it should be in that range. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next we'll analyze the night time because during the day I keep the windows open for ventilation, heating is mostly turned off and there is plenty of fresh air. Here is the first night, this was recorded in a bedroom where two people sleep. The bedroom door was opened but all windows in the house were closed, so basically no ventilation with the exception of some vent holes in the bathroom for which I don't have a clue if they uh, do anything or not. Uh, they should function as exhaust vents but there is no fresh air intake. We notice the CO2 levels went up gradually reaching almost 1700 ppm on the MHZ19B around 6.30 in the morning. The CCS811 is showing abnormal values in the range of 5000 ppm which can't be real but since this sensor measures volatile organic compounds and tries to estimate CO2 levels based on that, um, whenever there are VOCs present in the air the measurement will be heavily influenced. This type of sensor is also heavily influenced by temperature and humidity so that might explain the de deviation as well because uh, humidity tends to build up overnight. One thing is certain, we cannot use the data from the CCS811 because uh, we can see it presents abnormal values. For comparison purposes, here is another night with the same conditions, the MHZ19B recorded similar values with values upwards of 1500 ppm around 6.30 in the morning. So I'm starting to trust this data we get from the MHZ19B because the results are reproducible over different days. The CCS811 once again went crazy with the measurements, but here is something interesting. Around 5 p.m. I did the laundry and the VOC measurement started increasing rapidly and you guessed it, there was this pleasant smell spreading through the home from the laundry detergent. One conclusion to draw here, the CCS811 is heavily influenced by the volatile organic compounds present in the air while the MHZ19B continued to provide meaningful data, data uh, it was not influenced by VOCs. Next in one night I tried sleeping with uh, the kitchen window partially opened to allow some ventilation. Now even though the kitchen is on the other side of the hallway and the window was only partially open, this improved the air quality massively. The recorded CO2 concentration dropped in the 800 ppm range, that's half of what I was normally seeing. And for comparison I also have one night where only one person slept in the bedroom but with all windows closed and once again the recorded CO2 concentration dropped in the 800 ppm range which is half of what I was normally getting when two people were sleeping in the bedroom. Now you might ask yourself we got all of these values but what is the accepted level of CO2 concentrations? When should I start to get worried about these levels? Well information tends to vary depending on who did the study. There are different recommendations, but in general they all agree values under 1000 ppm are acceptable for indoor air. Levels between 1000 and 2000 ppm are associated with poor air quality and could cause general drowsiness feel for people. 
In my case, at least four months a year when it's cold outside and I'm sleeping with windows closed, I am getting levels of CO2 well above 1000 ppm at night time. And that's not good news for me. But what can I do to try and improve the air quality? Well, sleeping with a partially open window did improve the air quality and lowered CO2 levels below 1000 ppm, but I'm pretty sure that causes the heater to work for longer to maintain set temperature, which increases the gas usage. I don't think that's a good solution long term, as it will cost me more and I will spill more CO2 into the atmosphere. And did you know that background CO2 concentration has been increasing on an exponential curve for the past 100 years? For example, in the 1850s, the, levels the level was just 250 ppm, while today we are seeing values of 411 ppm. A proper solution would be a ventilation and filtration system with heat recovery. And I've seen a few of those on AliExpress, but they're not exactly cheap. Such a system recovers the heat from the air that goes in the exhaust to heat up the air that comes in through the intake. This way you don't bring in cold air from the outside directly into your home, but rather the air comes in at a temperature which is already pretty close to the ambient of your home and such a system also filters the air coming in thus providing a clean air to the inside of your home. Because here we were only measuring CO2, but we also have some uh, uh, particles which are not good for you in the air that comes in from the outside, so it's very nice to filter that before uh, inserting it into your ambient. This might be a good solution for someone who is renovating or moving into a new apartment, it might be a good investment that could raise the quality of living in that space, but since I'm living in a rental apartment, I don't feel like investing in such a system that would require ventilation channels to be installed and possibly left behind when I move out of here. For me, it seems the only things I can do are to properly ventilate the home during the daytime to ensure I let out the CO2 that is generated at night. And I can improve things a bit by keeping all the doors open so there is some air exchange between the different rooms thus diluting the CO2 that's generated to a larger volume of air. Except for these things, I can't think of anything else that would uh, help lower CO2 levels, but if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I also encourage you to check the levels in your home. I think you will be surprised by the results. Building a system similar to mine will probably cost you less than $30 in parts, and you can grab the sketch I used from uh, Vlog 275. This is how the setup looks in uh, my bedroom. I've taped it to, to this box to keep it upright because I had no, uh, no enclosure for this so far. But that was all for today. Thank you for watching. And while you are here, let me remind you I have a Patreon account where you can support the channel with as low as $1 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time with a new video.